providing some insight for us now. The man who authors Newsmax West Coast Report, we call him the right man on the left coast, <laughs> Skyping in from La La Land, it's James Herson. James, we welcome you back for our Friday assessment of things political and pop culturally and in terms of entertainment. Are you seeing signs of erosion in the Hollywood support for our president? Well, not among the sort of true believers, no. You know, just last month, uh, the president made a trip out here and was able to raise gobs of money with Barbara Streisand and Jeffrey Katzenberg and a whole bunch of other Hollywood people in attendance. So, but he wasn't raising money for himself. He was raising money, you know, for the election of senators and congressmen, as you well know, that uh, never-ending battle raising that money. Um, and Hollywood has been a place where Democrats traditionally take those trips. And look, there are three issues that sort of trump everything in Tinseltown. One is the environment. Secondly is the right to abort a child uh, whenever and wherever they want. And thirdly, it's um, the idea of cultural mores not interfering with the Hollywood lifestyle. And so those three issues still keep the bulk of the Hollywood glitterati solidly in the Democratic camp, but they're focused in a different direction now. They've already had fundraisers out here for Hillary Clinton, even though she hasn't announced yet. And they do watch to some extent, the mainstream media, and they've heard some unbelievable statements recently. I mean, NBC's Chuck Todd, who would be a hero in Hollywood, um, basically based on a poll, NBC Wall, Wall Street Journal poll earlier this week, basically called Obama a failed president. Wow. And they can't help but have some of the luster that they originally felt particularly back in the first election, some of that is removed and transferred over. Hmm. Now, James, going to a little bit of a separate issue, Hollywood relies heavily on independent contractors, and they rarely have access to health care. So I'm curious to know, now that Obamacare has gone into effect, has that had any effect on Hollywood? Well, when you talk about the independent contractors, you're talking about, I guess, what we would call the rank and file of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. These are the people actually that do the work. Right. I mean, look, I, I, I love actors. It's a wonderful profession, but they're pretending in front of a camera. Guess who's running the camera? It's those independent contractors you're talking about. It's people that do editing and camera work and uh, deal with special effects and really make the town go. Mm -hmm. And those people... Uh, depend, they're not super wealthy, and they depend an awful lot on the health care uh, uh, insurance that's available. And California is no exception. Uh, California's health care system, despite whatever spin they put on it, is a disaster with doctors opting out, with people getting inferior coverage, high deductibles, and higher premiums. And when you, it's really interesting. It's almost like there's two Hollywoods. Um, it, you know, the people that are rank and file that you talk about, mm -hmm. and also the people that work in the business, people that are executives, they have a different perception, a different concern, and they pay more close attention to economic news. And they know that the country's going the wrong direction. They're very concerned about it. Unfortunately, many of them, um, like the executive, uh, uh, the chairman of Disney, Alan Horn, who hosted this recent fundraiser, basically still see the Democratic Party as the answer uh, to all of these problems. And they do so, I think, based in great part about uh, uh, because of the trendiness of the community and, and everyone's sort of walking in lockstep. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it, that's why we have this this euphemism that Charlton Heston made up, uh, a closet conservative that, that exists in Hollywood. You know, I think it's important to note as well, we're talking about Hollywood, but there's also a huge film industry in Louisiana, here in South Florida, other parts of the country, and this affects them equally. No, no, and you know what, the, it's, uh, that is such an interesting topic because um, the spokesperson recently, very ironically, for getting lower taxes and more tax credits for the film industry was none other than Danny Glover. Danny Glover, friend of communist dictators. 
And Hollywood, that's one of the lessons that they've learned. The number one location for film shoots during the last year was not Hollywood. It was Louisiana. And it was based on Bobby Jindal-led tax incentives that drew the businesses right out of um, the Los Angeles area. I, and actually a laboratory test case for the way businesses behave when they have lower regulations and lower taxes. And that's why Vancouver's become Hollywood of the North, especially with television and cable production, because of the fact that we it's just basic Milton Friedman economics at play. And so they're trying desperately in the legislature of California to stop the flow of production out of the state. You mentioned the late great Milton Friedman. The watchword from the good doctor was, if you want less of something, tax it. And so it's interesting to see that that maybe California can be waking up. Jim, about a minute remains. We'd be remiss if we didn't return uh, to one entertainment note earlier this week, news that uh, Hollywood was uh, starting screen treatments on the saga of Bo Bergdahl. We don't even have the final word on, on his status. He's in a military hospital in San Antonio. With a minute left, your take on now the treatment, Hollywood uh, taking up this story. Well, it always makes us very nervous when uh, the typical Hollywood professionals take up uh, a story that's ripped from the headlines. And as you mentioned, we, we don't really know all of the facts, but what we do know is that Americans who served this nation were actually attacked uh, rhetorically by the White House because they came out and told their perceptions of what had happened uh, with Bergdahl and the fact that some um, American uh, military had lost their lives trying to rescue this guy after he deserted. Uh, will will they tell the truth about this story? That's the big question. And, and that's Based why we're going to stay record. tuned. You bet. James, <laughs> yeah. we'll get back to you next week. Thanks so much for your time. There's more on America's Forum next.